Hi chemists. You made it to the last part of our notes for states of matter. In this part, we are going to focus on something called a phase diagram. After today, you should be able to draw a phase diagram and label each state of matter, changes of state, and the triple point. You will also be asked to identify at what temperature or pressure the substance will change state. And finally, infer which phase of a substance is going to be the most dense by looking at a phase diagram. A phase diagram shows the conditions of temperature and pressure that are necessary for a substance to exist as a solid, liquid, or gas. It's basically like a summary chart. So when you have a phase diagram, water we talk about all the time, so I figured I would just show you how to draw one for water. You'll have two axes. On the x-axis, you'll have temperature, and on the y-axis, you'll have pressure. You'll start with a line at the origin. You'll kind of draw it up and slant it towards the right there. And then you'll draw a second line, I would say about, I don't know, a third of the way up, and it's going to slant to the left like that. Then you can label the states of matter. So first of all, you'll have solid, then you'll have liquid, and then you'll have gas. Some other parts that are important are the different lines. So for example, this line separates solid and liquid. What this is telling you is that this is the melting and freezing line. This line over here separates the liquid and gas. So therefore, this is going to be the boiling slash condensing line. And then this line right here is separating the solid from the gas. And so therefore, this will be the sublimation and deposition line. These lines all convey what is going on or what phase change is occurring depending on which direction you're going. So for example, if we were to look at the melting and freezing line, if we were to go from, for example, left to right as to illustrate an increase in temperature, then that would tell us that we would expect to see melting. But if we were to go in the opposite direction and maybe go from the uh, liquid to solid, we would expect to see freezing. The line that you see here is supposed to illustrate the um, standard pressure. So 101.3 kPa, if you recall, is standard pressure. Then if you extend that line down to the x-axis, that will actually give you two temperatures. Now, what you're going to see here is on the left line that you see extending down is going to be the normal melting point. Now, the reason why it's called the normal melting point is because, first of all, it's at standard pressure, but it's also called the melting point because it's on the melting slash freezing line. I guess you could also technically call it the normal freezing point if you wanted to as well. It just, again, depends on is energy going in or is energy going out. On the right-hand side, again, that's the boiling slash condensing line. So that would be, for example, the normal boiling point, which you know for water would be 100 degrees Celsius. Another part of the graph that you want to become familiar with is the um, part where all three lines will intersect. And this is a really cool part in the graph because this is actually called the triple point. And the triple point is where all three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, coexist in equilibrium. I'll show you an example of that momentarily. So as I mentioned, the triple point represents the conditions of temperature and pressure at which all three states of matter are in equilibrium with each other. So you'll see solid, liquid, and gas exist all simultaneously. So I'll show you a picture of something that looks like this. This is usually accomplished in a laboratory. So here's an example of you, a round bottom flask. And you can see you have a pressure controlled environment and a temperature controlled environment. And I don't know if you can notice, but you can see very clearly that on the bottom you have liquid. Above here you have your ice or your solid water. And then here you can see you've got some gaseous particles as evidenced by the condensation or the droplets that you're seeing here recondensing. So this would be an example of the triple point that has been reached for water. There are two types of phase diagrams. The first is where the liquid state is more dense than the solid state. So for example, with water. And that's interesting because again, we know that ice floats, right? So if ice is floating, that means that we would say that the liquid state is more dense than the solid state. Most substances, however, is where you expect to see the solid state be more dense. So that's pretty much true for all substances. 
So there's a very easy way to tell, looking at a phase diagram, what is going to be the most dense um, state of matter. So if the solid liquid line slants to the left, the liquid state is more dense than the solid state. So it typically looks something like this. Another way you can look at it is if this liquid region is larger, that's usually going to be the more dense state. And so this is going to represent water. Conversely, you could also have the solid liquid line slanting to the right. And this is where you would expect to see the solid state be more dense than the liquid state because the solid region is a little larger. So that's the line we're referring to. And again, this represents most substances. So this video again was all about phase diagrams and how to read phase diagrams. It was a nice summary and end to our unit. As always, you need practice. Thank you so much for watching.